This episode is brought to you by Bent Beauty, your one-stop shop for all things lashes, lips, and lids. If you're looking for lashes that don't look like spider legs, beautiful lipsticks that pop, matted lipsticks that keep your lips moisturized, or palettes with a variety of beautiful pigmented colors, Bent Beauty is the spot for you. Save 25% off your first purchase by using the coupon code OHELLNO. Oh That's OHELLNO oh in all caps. Let Bent Beauty help you discover that inner hot gal that's dying to get out. everyone welcome to another episode of side talk today i have amy mary west and uh we're going to be talking about publicity amy is an entrepreneur she is a pr professional who helps female entrepreneurs grow their business and um she is the founder of pitch and shout which is a pr coaching and strategy um i don't know would you call it a firm or just a company Hi, oh, yes. Um, I guess you would call it a company. I I provide done for you PR, but I also teach ambitious women how to do their own PR. So it's a bit of both, really. I guess I'm a consultancy. <laughs> okay. So welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So I want to start by talking about how you got into public relations. Was this like... Um, a passion that you followed or did you just uh, stumble into this career? To be honest, I love this question because it's quite a nice story and I find it quite inspiring. It was complete accident that I ended up in PR. I was um, in between traveling and I live in the UK, so I live near, near London. And I started in a very, very small PR agency local to me it was a a very very tiny boutique agency and I had taken a temporary role there because I was in between kind of stages of of traveling I was I was home for a while so I started there and actually to be honest I was really worried when I started because I didn't at that time I was only maybe 20 22 years old and I didn't really like um the, you know, being on the phone in front of lots of people. I didn't fully understand what PR even was. Um, I certainly didn't like um, kind of people listening to my conversations. And I knew that I would be pitching stuff into journalists. It was just, it was a really big uh, thing for me. And it was terrifying. But I was actually, to be honest, I was quite, um, quite outgoing. Uh, and I was very good at hiding my terror so I went along and I did it and um to be honest I never really looked back I I enjoyed it I was really good at it and that temporary role turned into a permanent role and the company moved to London and I moved with the company and I just went from bigger to bigger to bigger agency I did come away in the end it got it got too big and too much in the end for me which is why I do what I do now but yes it was a complete accident but a very very welcome one Wow. So what would you say you were the best at with regard to your public relation roles? Because I know you have to definitely pitch to the media. You got to write up these reports about your clients and all types of stuff like that. So what would you say was your superpower? Two, actually, if I can be greedy. Yeah, of course. Um, (laughs) I think the first one, I really enjoy what some people call stunts. Um, I enjoyed working for big clients that maybe had a little bit more money to spend and we would have creative reign. So I enjoyed coming up with story ideas and kind of manufacturing stories as well. So, um, you know, pop-up stunts, flash mobs, that kind of thing. And I think I took quite naturally to stuff like that because I'm quite creative Mm -hmm. and um, I think the other thing that I am good at and I think it is because in the end it was something that I enjoyed and it was probably because of the great coverage that was coming through and maybe the excitement that that gave me but I really enjoyed making the relationships with the journalists so 
when I started out, which was when I was 20, I'm 38 now, so it's a while ago, it, it was much more acceptable to kind of go out for a drink or lunch with the journalists. It's not so much done anymore, to be honest. We're all online now, especially with the pandemic. But I used to really enjoy kind of going out and, and um, you know, making some great relationships. And I got some great coverage off the back of it, really. Nice. So what would you say was something that you disliked about the industry? Yeah, that is kind of what brought me out in the end. It's very fast paced, which was not a problem a long time. But I found in the end that it was very hard to emotionally keep up with the industry because you have to be on top of your game all the time when you're working in the city for a big agency that's certainly not I don't want to put people off PR that's not what it's like and it's certainly not how I teach it it's not a representation of PR when you're handling your own PR but when you're working in the city and you've got very big clients and you're up against people pitching for those very big clients it's quite hard to um, to take it on the chin all the time I think you win some you lose some but you have to keep up and uh, it's a bit much. It can be a bit much when you're working for a big agency. Okay. I worked in public relationship, uh, pub, public relationship, public relations for a short while. I oh, did and you? I did. I thought that that was my calling and that I would be really good at it. And the agency that I was working with, I just felt like they were very clicky and not very nice, you know, and I just didn't fit in. And it, I realized very quickly that that was not the path for me. <laughs> yeah. um, but I still do, you know, like I, I somehow found my way into doing something in the communications arena, you know, because I'm doing this podcast with which I really enjoy, you know, meeting different people. I do get to interact with publicists and and people like that with their clients and you know getting them on the show and stuff so somehow some way it's still you know happening for me but just on different terms yeah on your terms I think that's great it's a great thing because I I know what you mean the agencies are it's a very clicky yeah very clicky thing to be in absolutely (laughs) <laughs> so when did you realize that you could teach entrepreneurs how to be their own publicist or how to, you know, do what you do for clients? I would say that the only reason I didn't do it is because I just didn't put those pieces together. I just don't think I ever thought of it as a career Um, when I left the agency, I did freelance PR, but I didn't think to teach anybody. And teaching is only, I'm only about a year and a half into teaching, but it was kind of my husband. He had a little bit of, he's very creative. He's quite entrepreneurial himself. And he suggested it. And I guess I didn't run with it straight away until I came across a coach, Lisa Johnson, who teaches women um she teaches women how to create courses and memberships and it really was on the back of talking to her that I realized actually I can teach women who maybe either don't want to uh outsource it as um a job or whether maybe they don't they can't afford to outsource it I can teach those women how to do it for themselves because actually it's not that difficult it's we we tell ourselves it's really difficult we tell ourselves we have this whole narrative about PR that we couldn't possibly do it we're not a publicist and I just don't think we ever entertain the idea so that can be my biggest struggle sometimes is convincing people that they are quite capable of doing it but that's absolutely how I kind of ended up teaching really yeah I do feel like it's quite intimidating because first of all figuring out how to even get in touch with the media, then figuring out what media source would be the best to, you know, reach out to, then how do you present yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think all of those things uh, make it a little intimidating. And then on top of that, you're right. A lot of new entrepreneurs, marketing is 
so expensive and it's just not something you have money for. <laughs> mm, yeah. So guys, the interesting thing is that Amy sends out these uh, emails. I, I came across her. I was just like Googling like publicity or something like that. I don't even remember. I was just looking for something and that's how I came across Amy and I signed up for your newsletters. And so I received them and I read them and I saw one that talked about getting publicity for a new business. And I thought that was fabulous because I have a new business and I know a lot of people who have new businesses and you always feel as a new business owner that you're not going to be able to get any coverage or, you know, anything because your business is too new and no one is interested in a business that's just starting out. So I really wanted to bring Amy on and talk a little bit about that and um, let people know that that's a myth. So Amy, tell us a little bit about why that is not true that, you know, a new business can never get coverage. Yes. So um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because um, that email resonated with lots of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because firstly, I think we set ourselves a benchmark and we say, okay, I need to have this amount of revenue coming in every year before I could possibly reach out to a national newspaper because I'm far too small. And, you know, they'll, I think we have this imposter syndrome and they think that we're just going to discover that we're that you know, you're, you're a small business um, you're not earning enough money, you don't have enough clients or all these other things that we tell ourselves. And um, it's just not true. Firstly, especially when you're providing, let's say, uh, expert comment or expert insight to a subject for a journalist, we firstly tell ourselves we have to be the best but out there. We can't just settle for the expert that we are. We have to be the best. And that, that's what puts us off, first of all. And that's just, um, it's just not true. You don't need to be the best expert. What you have to remember is the journalist is a journalist. They're not skincare expert. They're not a hairdresser. They're not, you know, a, a, they don't work in childcare. They don't know ch children, anything like that. They are the journalists. So you're providing them with some information that you're filling in the gaps for them that they can't fill in. You don't need to be the best expert. If you're doing it for your job, then you're the expert. Um, and I think we kind of just tell ourselves sometimes that, you know, we we um, also need to reach this certain level of success. We can't be at the beginning of our story. Um, we have to have reached um, some milestone before we can kind of approach national press. And again, that's just not true either, because I think, you know, the information that you can give at the beginning of your journey when you, you're starting out in whatever business you have, it's not going to change you're still going to have those skills or qualifications or whatever it is that you have. They're not going to evolve over time and they might evolve over time, but then that just makes a new story. So, you know, it really doesn't matter at what stage you are in your journey um, as to the kind of information that you can give to a journalist or, or the level of press that you can aim for. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I do think too, that when you start a business, you're always thinking that, oh, yeah, I have to be I do have to make this sale to do this or that or to even talk to anybody about my business. Like, for instance, I have a um, beauty business that I am, you know, building. And it's only two years old. And it's very in the infancy stages still. And yesterday I got an opportunity to speak on a um, beauty panel with some other women who have new businesses that they're also building. And I would have never thought that I would have been worthy of an opportunity like that because I feel like, oh my God, I'm new to this industry. You know, it's not like I'm a well-known brand, you know, I'm still trying to get myself out there. But it was such a great opportunity and just meeting with these, being on a panel with these other women who are doing the same thing I'm doing and listening to how similar our stories are in terms of, you know, just where they are in their business and, and what they need and what they're still trying to accomplish. It's like we're in the same place. And I, I almost feel like new businesses 
are a great source of information, people who have new businesses, you know, Mm. Um, because they're in the, you know, they're in that, that place where things are really happening. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And they can really provide some insight for people who are thinking of going into business or, or just let someone know who is in business that, Hey, I'm in the very same place. Like, no, you're not doing bad. Like, this is how it goes. Yeah. You know? So, um, I really appreciated that you wrote an article like that. So tell me what would be some tips for like a new podcast? Like I'm a new podcast. I mean, well, I'm a new old podcast. It's, it's not that old, but it's still, it's not that new, but it's not that old. (laughs) I'll be five years this, um, year, but I still feel like getting, Uh, listeners is really a challenge because there's so many podcasts out there every day a new podcast is popping up there's so much noise you know it's kind of hard to one figure out your audience then find them and make sure that this podcast gets to them so what would you say about a new podcast how would you tell people because there are a lot of people out there starting podcasts and they don't know what the heck to do what would you tell them about creating a media kit for themselves? Like what would be three tips that you would say to kind of um, highlight that you are a podcast that's out there with worthy information, but you're still new. So your numbers are going to be a little bit lower than someone who's more established. Yeah. I think with something like that, the best thing to focus on is the information that you want to give in that podcast So uh, whatever theme it is, whatever you're talking about, that's your area of expertise and that's your story. And I would always suggest for someone, even at the very beginning of their podcast, to, um, I would always say is to read first, read everything that you can around your subject within the press. So things like setting up Google alerts are really good with your kind of buzzwords, your industry buzzwords, and just start seeing who's talking about what, and then find out what journalists are writing these articles. And then I, myself, I would always suggest that someone focuses, unless you've got a really, really interesting backstory as to why you're podcast exists your best kind of strategy would be to start putting together thought leadership pieces so start talking about the stuff that you know and the stuff that you talk about on your podcast and looking around the media and see what's already being written and if you know what's what articles look like and how they're written and what people are consuming and who's writing it You've got a better chance of kind of emulating that and then thinking, okay, what do I know? I know this subject really well. What do my audience need? What are they really struggling with? I can put that down and I can, I now have hopefully four or five journalists I know write about this kind of stuff. So it's more selling yourself in rather than the podcast. The podcast comes with you and what you would essentially hope to end up with is a story or a a human interest story or a thought leadership story about the stuff that you know and you and then you with with all with hopefully you would have a link to uh to actually find your podcast at the bottom of that article that's kind of where I would suggest that you start for sure okay that's great advice what about people for who have new businesses who are looking to get coverage um their businesses are new they just started um they're just getting out there they have minimal sales um do you think it's even worth trying to reach out to media or should they just work on um brand recognition just trying to build up their presence yeah i think i think reaching out is is good to do straight away I think journalists love a story they love a rags to riches story they like a backstory especially places I mean I I generally deal with the with the British press I mean places like the BBC 
they do kind of small business stories and there are lots and lots of national press uh, that cover new business stories. And I think it's the same sort of thing is to focus less on your business and more about what it is that you do. Obviously, unless you're a product-based business, that's different. But if you're a service-based business, to start thinking about what it is that you know. Is there anything that you could talk about, let's say for half an hour, um, and you are probably likely to be the only person in the room that can talk about that for half an hour. You could go unscripted, you could go unprompted, but you really know your stuff. That probably is the business that you're in. It's to try and think about stuff like that and think about what people need to learn from you. And I think sometimes we get very focused. Um, and this is my biggest struggle in PR. When I'm teaching ladies, I have to really work hard to get them away from thinking about their business. Obviously, I'm not talking about product-based businesses. I'm talking about service-based businesses. Product-based businesses are slightly different, but service-based businesses, people focus on their business and they will write a press release about their business, when it launched, what it's called, uh, you know, uh, what it sells and who owns it and what you do. And, and that's just not interesting to the press. What's interesting is the stories that go with it. So things like um, any advice, advice pieces, you know, five of the best tips for this or um, how I overcame this. So like a overcoming adversity story, uh, your backstory, um, any statistics, any um, trends that are happening. So if something big is kicking off in the press, you know, a big story like the Kate and Harry, uh, not Kate and Harry, Meghan and Harry, sorry, the Meghan and Harry story. Um, you know, I wrote a press release about that because it, it was just about PR and how their PR really wasn't handled maybe that well. I wrote a press release about that. So it's just about trying to think what people are consuming and what's happening right now. Stuff that you can talk about. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And let's talk about press releases for a minute. When is a press release appropriate and how effective are press releases? So I would always suggest that people have to create a press release on the back of any of those stories uh, to create maybe evergreen press releases if you're a product based service. So you might want to if you sell let's say perfume, uh, you might want to put together a press release about the ideal perfume to buy your mum for Christmas, something like that. Um, but a press release can really be written for anything. It can be written about anything that I've just mentioned. And you simply use it to get the information across to the journalists that you want to get across. And it doesn't have to be personal to them. So I think it's always good to maybe write a press release so you've got the information down and a journalist will always just treat it as that. They will treat it as the information that is being passed on to them. And it's not really the thing that will change with each journalist is the email that you send to them. So when you send an email to the journalist with that press release in, you would make that email very personal to them. I always encourage people to, to write a personal email to the journalist in addition to their press release that would be attached to it. So really, I would just always suggest that you see it as a way of getting that information across to them. So let's say you have a business and you have a small business and you're launching a new product. Is that press release worthy? Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be, especially with, with products. Products are different. We don't have to get too weighed down with making it sound so good people people worry that it's too boring and they forget that really a press release is uh, a way of you getting all the information that a journalist needs across to them in a nice presentable way it doesn't have to be written like an article it doesn't have to be full of fancy adjectives it just needs to give them, uh, you know, what the product is, where they can buy it, if there's any kind of story behind it, why it was made, what it is, the five W's I call them. So what, where, when, uh, why and who. Uh, so if there's any of those uh, aspects to the story, they need to be included as well. But yeah, we, 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 people stress a lot about the press release and your 
it needs to be written well and it needs to give them everything they need to know. But you'll win the journalist over with that email that comes before that press release. That's where you've got to put as much work in as well. That's where you win them over. Got it. So with coaching the women, when do you send them off on their own? Like, how does your coaching program work? So it's totally changed now. Um, I am right in the middle of a complete overhaul. Previously, my course was 12 weeks long and it was a weekly lesson. And I taught everything that they needed to know for small business PR. And they went away with lots of knowledge And we had some amazing results, national press, radio, everything. It was fantastic. We still do. I've just finished another course, but I've changed it now. The course is now a business specific. So I will be running four courses this year. Uh, The first one is just focusing on getting your products in Christmas gift guides. So although it's specifically around Christmas gift guides, it will really help you get your products in any gift guide, but it's focused on product-based businesses, luxury product-based businesses. Then I will be doing a book PR course and a personal brand PR course. So that's for service-based businesses, coaches, podcasts, those kind of types of business. They, uh, the, It will be a course for those people. Um, and then there will be a slightly more extensive product-based business one where we look at, you know, other avenues you can take with products because it's not just about uh, talking about the product. Sometimes we can we can look at other avenues. So, yes, it's just business specific, which means the courses are much shorter. So there'll be a week long now and there will be a lesson every day. Um, And then there will be an implementation week where I support the women through their first week of sending and pitching. So I have a journalist on the team who helps them to write everything because, you know, I, I need a bit of help. Sometimes I'm expecting the numbers to be slightly bigger this time. So that's the part they struggle with. And that's why I've added an implementation week, because after 12 weeks of learning, sometimes they just couldn't quite get there. They just couldn't. It's a lot to take in. And I think that's why this implementation week is is going to be a week long course. And then they're going to have a week of me really supporting them to start sending because that's the big step. That's the scary step. But it shouldn't be scary. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I could just imagine. (laughs) So is your stuff open to people all over the world or? Yeah. It's much the same, really. I t- so I teach people the fundamentals of getting a story sometimes out of nothing. And that's the biggest problem is people don't know what to write about. And it's teaching them how to make their brain think of this stuff. And there is a way of doing it. So, yes, it can be taught in any country because the stories are the same. You would just be looking at stories relevant to your own industry and maybe your own country if you're not looking at worldwide press um you know and I teach you how to find the journalists and again you can find journalists wherever you are um and I teach you how to pitch stuff in and it, it can translate really anywhere um so yeah I can teach worldwide nice Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and having this conversation with me, which I think is so important for new entrepreneurs and people just trying different things. Please tell us where we can connect with you, get your your emails because they're amazing. (laughs) Please tell everyone how they can sign up. You can sign up to my emails on my new website, which is on the website um free resources to kind of get you thinking and get you started out so um it's worth a visit to to check out the freebies page on there as well thank you so much amy you're welcome thank you for having me no problem